Hello there, and welcome to another video on a solid foundation. Today, I will continue the discussion that we had the last time dealing with the mark of the beast, and we looked about the lesson, the sanctuary, and then we looked at how God used the reformers to reinstate the beauty and the message through the sanctuary, what uh, he was trying to tell us all through the ages. Now we know, as we said before, the sanctuary is what God used to prepare the children of Israel with the full understanding as to his will for them and their way back to him. And as a result, because we know that our God never changes, we today could learn from the sanctuary as well. So let's take a step further into this. Now, today, we know that it is our choice. We know that it's not a chip or anything like that. And the question is, how will I know if I have already received that mark? How do I know? Uh, and how do I know what is required? Okay, so for that, we must understand something that I would like to call the image of the beast. All right, if you would like to have a full understanding, do I already have the mark? Well, we need to understand that thing that's called the image of the beast. Now, as a driver, we must learn several signs, road signs and symbols, and we will quickly learn them. No one really takes a uh, difficulty in doing that. We become even skillful drivers and very safe one to that point. Now, anyone who doesn't pay attention to uh, road signs and road markings and symbols might find themselves uh, going off or a cliff. You might see a yield sign and think that, you know, it doesn't mean anything. It's just a nice colored post there and you find yourself uh, in a T-bone situation. Or like when I used to drive up in the mountains, you might see that inclined sign and just think it means uh, nothing there. Just a nice ice cream cone chuck, uh, truck pointing downwards. <laughs> And if you don't pay attention, you might find yourself over a cliff or something like that. Well, my wife is a nurse and she has to pay attention to all those symbols, those biohazard things and what they mean. If not, you don't pay attention to them. You might find yourself contracting some deadly uh, disease or God forbid you start some uh, biohazard outbreak. And no one wants that. So paying attention to signs and symbol is essential. Now by the same token, don't let anyone tell you that you should not pay attention to Bible signs and studying Bible signs is hard. And as a result, don't go to that book, you know, um, it's a waste of time, it's too scary. No, 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 no. You shouldn't listen to anyone who tells you that. Understanding signs and symbols is an important part of Bible study. And in the book of Revelation, there are many signs and symbols that you have to understand. But the beauty is, the beauty is there's no guesswork the Bible itself explains every one of these signs and symbols so that you can have a full understanding because that's God's plan. He doesn't want you to be lost. It's no guesswork. So, in Daniel chapter 7, verses 7 to 23, the symbol is explained because today in our study, I'll go and talk about two symbols. It says, These great beasts which are four are four kings which shall arise out of the earth so in the book of daniel daniel had a vision he had a dream and he saw some beasts and the bible itself records that these four beasts these beasts which you saw the four of them are four kings which shall arise out of the earth now i will be going to the book of revelation to explain this thing that I call the image of the beast because we want to know where we are and I'm saying to you we need to look for the image of the beast and if we can find the image of the beast we know the only way you can see an image of something they have to be the real thing all right so for us to really understand if we have the mark of the beast if we already see with the mark of the beast we have to understand the image of the beast and so we hear about this word beast and a lot of people normally get afraid when they hear of the beast I'm telling you according to Daniel the Bible explaining itself the four kings Four beasts that you saw, four kings. Well, we know a king must have a kingdom, all right? And so in today's, bringing that into the 
our time that we live, the 21st century and beyond, uh, we don't really have a whole lot of kings and so on anymore. Unless you're in England with Meghan Markle and those down there and Prince Harry and so on. But the majority of the world, we don't really longer have kings. Just a few uh, countries and so on still like that. So bringing it up to date with the modern time, whenever we read about a beast, we know it, understand it, we understand it, it means kings and therefore a kingdom. But in our modern time, we will say that that will represent uh, a government or a power, a political power dealing with that aspect. So for now, when you hear about beasts in the Bible, especially the book of Revelation, Daniel, you can translate that to interpret to be some government, some political power, or uh, things like that. Kings, kingdoms, powers, government, and so on. Now, we have that clear. Now, in Revelation 13, which is what I want, where I, I want us to spend some time today, and we'll do it in small parts, it says there, uh, reading from verse 1. And I stood upon the sand of the sea and saw a beast rising up out of the sea, having seven heads and ten horns and upon his horns, ten crowns and upon his heads, the name of blasphemy. And the beast which I saw was like unto a leopard, and, he, and his feet were as the feet of a bear, and his mouth as the mouth of a lion. And the dragon give power unto the, give, give him his power and his seat and his great authority. Well, let's stop there. There's another symbol that I have to explain to you right there because we heard something else that came up. Yes, we heard about the leopard. We will not focus on the leopard right now, but I, you're hearing of a dragon. Well, Revelation explains what that dragon is. Revelation 12 verse 9 makes it plain to us that the dragon, we're talking about the war in heaven and Michael and his angels fought and there was no place for him and that. You know, he was cast out, and it clearly stated who was cast out. We talk about the dragon, and we know who it was. Let me read it carefully now so you will get that. It says, But the dragon was not strong enough, and no longer was any place found in heaven for him and his angels. And the great dragon was hurled down, that ancient serpent, or what? Here's what he was called the devil and Satan, the deceiver of the whole world. He was hurled to the earth and his angels with him. So, so when we read that so far, we have this clear, clear understanding. Whenever we hear about uh, beasts, we're talking about some kingdom or political power, some government. And whenever we read about in Daniel, or the book of Revelation, whenever we read about the word uh, dragon, we're talking about the devil, Satan. All right. So going on to verse three there, it says, And I saw one of his head as though it was wounded to death, and his deadly wound was healed, and all the world wonder after this beast. So this beast, this, this government, this power that existed, seemed as though he had a wound, and this wound was, uh, was healed, and the whole world is wondering after this beast. The whole world went after this power, this government, this organization that, that led the people. But understand, verse 4 says, And they worship the dragon, which give the power unto the beast. So the devil gives power to this country, this nation, this kingdom that everyone is going after. We're talking about uh, spiritualism here. And they worship the beast, saying, Who is like unto the beast? All right. Who is like unto this country? Who is able to, or this government, to make war with him? We are, you see, we are entering a period into, into world's history right now when de deism and sorcery and uh, mind control, in essence, spiritualism and heresies will become the norm of today's society. But ultimately, spiritualism, which is basically uh, the devil working behind the scene, uh, is, is, is what is playing out. In verse 5, it says, And they were given unto him... We're talking about him, this revived beast, such as revived country or power or nation. The mouth to speak great things and blasphemies and power was given unto him to continue for 40 and two months. Now, 40 and two months uh, basically is 1,260 years. I'm trying to keep this uh, discussion very simple, but probably in a little time, I'll explain to you how we get to that number. And so we know 
all through the time. Verse 6 says, And he opened his mouth in blasphemy against God to blaspheme his name and his tabernacle and them that dwell upon the earth. Now, blasphemy, the way if you research it is it's an act of um, or a sense of speaking sacrilegiously against God or, or sacred things or profane talk, right? But if you look at a more strict uh, definition in terms of theology, it is a crime of assuming to oneself the rightful quality of God. And that's why uh, when Jesus said that he was a son of man and, and, and the Jews got mad with him, all right? And when he said, you know, that, you know, uh, your sins be forgiven, they were like, whoa, you're blasphemed because only God can forgive sins. You are taking upon yourself uh, power or a title or, or position, authority that doesn't belong to you. They got upset and they plot to kill him. So anyone on earth, any country or nation who usurps or takes the place or the position or the name of God on earth or make themselves equal, it's basically blaspheming. And so it was given unto him to make war with the saints and to overcome them and power was given unto, unto him all over all kindreds and towns and nations. And all that dwell upon the earth shall worship him whose name are not written in the book of life. The book of life of the Lamb stand from the foundation of the world. So if you want to know if you already have the mark of the beast, the question is, we got to ensure that we don't have our names taken out of God's Lamb book of life. And only us by our choice, by our decision to process things and actually carry it out will allow our names to be removed from God's book of life. So, verse 9 says, If any man have an ear, let him hear. Verse 11 says, And I beheld, if I go down now, and I beheld another beast coming up out of the earth, and he had two horns. So another nation, another nation rising up, right? And this nation will have two horns, one like a lamb, and he spake as a dragon. Hmm, you're talking about some deceptive work here. You look kind of innocent, but you're talking like the devil, all right? The dragon, dragon, devil, Satan. So you look like an innocent lamb, but you're acting devilish. I hope none of us find ourselves in that category as Christians. We, 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 we look the part, but we, we act something else, all right? And it says, verse 12, and he exercised all the power of the first beast, all the power of this first nation, which means that you're going to persecute God's people. You will do all these different things, you know, that, that, that hurt God's people. All right. It says and he exercised all the power of the first beast before him and caused the earth and them that dwell to worship the first beast whose deadly wound was healed. And so this nation, all right, is going to act just like the first one and then cause everyone else to go back and pay homage, worship the first beast, the first nation that did all these atrocities and deceived them that dwell upon the earth by the means of those miracles which he had performed, uh, had the power to do in the sight of the beast, saying to them that dwell upon the earth that they should make an image to the beast which had his wound by the sword, which had the wound by, by a sword and did live. And he had power to give life unto the image of the beast, that the image of the beast should both speak and cause that as many that would not worship the image of the beast to be killed. And so I'm talking about the image of the beast today. If you want to know if you basically have the mark of the beast, don't worry about that yet. We have to understand and look for the image of the beast. In other words, are we living in a time where a particular nation, a particular country is now as that started off like a lamb, but is now acting like the devil in terms of behavior is do we have a country that is forcing us all back to support a prior country or institution that persecuted God's people? When we see that start to happen, we know that the mark of the beast, because behind the image must be the real thing, that the mark of the beast is about to show down. And I say to you, that's what we have to look for. And I tell you, the signs are shaping up right now. Is there a movement calling for us all to go back and pay homage to a particular country 
nice little country or institution. Something to think about. Until next time, I would love to hear your comments. If you're seeing it too, drop me a comment. Uh, subscribe for my next video as I continue this topic. If you like it, share it. Until next time, take care of yourself. Remember, a solid foundation is what we all need.